always axial choline produces apnea only but this particular word is coined to denote uh, the prolonged apnea more than 30 minutes after succinyl choline that is the definition of succinyl choline apnea so in a short notes question if it's asked succinyl choline apnea we must write the, the apnea which is more than 30 minutes after giving succinyl choline as uh, intubating agent in uh, depolarizing muscle relaxant they are called as succinyl choline apnea so what happens is the main problem Normally, when the patient doesn't come out of uh, for a short procedure, suppose you say you want to do a, a very minor procedure under anesthesia, and uh, the patient does not come out, then you know it's a prolonged apnea. Then you will know to do other tests. You know to manage. But supposing in a normal patient, a heterozygous variant, but more of atypical uh, enzyme is there. What happens? You think when the patient is started to buck on the tube. Then you think that depolarizing action is gone. Then you give those patient a non-depolarizing muscle uh, relaxant, and you continue the uh, anesthesia. But what happens? Even if even without checking the, uh, whether he comes out of scoline, you start with the uh, you continue with the non-depolarizing agent like a serial. Serially you are giving. Initially you started with uh, uh, inter induction agent. Then you give a depolarizing succinyl choline. Then you intubated, connected to a machine, started with inhalation agent. Now the patient is going to do abdominal surgery. So you want a dense anesthesia, a neuromuscular relaxation to be continued. So now you, even without checking, you don't want the patient to buck on the table because it may produce, it can increase the BP and everything. So you want to give them a uh, follow it up with a non depolarizing agent at the end of surgery. Now three hours, two hours, the surgery is over. You want to reverse. You are given reversal also. Even then the patient doesn't come out. Now the question comes, is the patient really a succinyl choline apnea or whether he has gone into the phase 2 block of succinyl choline or what exactly is happening, what exactly is happening. So for that we should know a protocol to know what it is and how to maintain them unless you know thoroughly about the implication, anesthetic implications of succinyl choline apnea. It is not as simple as an apnea. It is very very difficult to manage unless you know the molecular mechanism behind the uh, succinyl choline metabolism. So, it is caused by the lowering of enzymatic. I told you earlier, the IBK number anything less than 40 percent, uh, 14 units of IBK number, automatically then you take it for granted that these patients have more of atypical choline stress. Uh, so that the, which does not hydrolyze the succinyl choline and there are more of succinyl choline in this system. So that is the number one. Number two understanding will be the prolonged apnea and inability to move after a clinical dose of succinyl choline. So you have not repeat dose, you have not given, not given a, a second dose of choline, you have not done any other relaxant that means it is only due to succinyl choline. So you will know very well it is a simple prolonged apnea lasting for more than 30 minutes after giving succinyl and choline you can clearly understand that the patient is not able to move after a clinical dose of 0 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram of succinyl choline only then you know it is a prolonged apnea the succinyl choline apnea then thirdly you will know that once the patient is now he is not under induction the pentothal sodium uh, you, you are given and it has come out and you are slowly inhalation also you are going to shut off because you are thinking the surgery is over. So you want to uh, switch off nitrous oxide, switch off your halothane or desflurane or sevoflurane, whatever inhalation agent or if you are uh, continued anesthesia with the uh, analgesia of opioid and uh, suppose you are given uh, ketamine or your propofol, you are stopping them all of them in 15 minutes the surgery got over okay and you have stopped everything only on oxygen the patient you are in just ventilating and just uh, si si trying to see whether the patient is coming out of scoline whether you can safely because you know very well uh, succinyl choline he has to come out in 15 minutes 13 9 to 13 minutes and then he does not come out but now what happens awareness is likely the patient is only in oxygen supplementation. So he is conscious, he knows what is happening, he knows you are all talking in the operating room 
and he knows the surgeon is talking something the surgery is over and surgeon is telling no no i'm waiting for the patient to come out so all those talks even whether you talk or not the very very aspect of inability to move uh, with a paralyzed patient conscious paralyzed patient inability to move makes him aware of the situation around him he will develop a tachycardia and hypertension profound so that may even precipitate a myocardial infarction so the minute or the moment not even a minute you take the moment you realize the patient is in prolonged apnea try to do the other neuromuscular monitoring and find out whether he has got the apnea due to scolene even before finding out within min within that moment you take him to a deeper plane increasing the inhalation agent no matter it may take another 30 minutes also to recover no worry please don't worry about that you remember the kulen and uh, uh, the quotes by kulen he said you know patient can be only on a neuromuscular blocking drug without anesthesia remember that that is golden words you take it to me that is very very important quote for all of us anesthetists to avoid the unwanted complications of tachycardia and hypertension and precipitation of uh, myocardial infarction 